God damn, it is time to cut my hair. What is happening, everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. So, as of like not even a couple days ago, I didn't even know this film existed. And when it comes to Korean films, like Korean horror especially, if I can help it, I try not to miss them. And that is solely just being a person that lives in the US. When it comes to Korean horror, we don't exactly know how much access we're gonna get to them. You know, films like, for example, uh, A Tale of Two Sisters, which I have seen once. I think I actually saw it on stream, and for whatever reason, you can't find it now. Now, this film called The Ghost Station, this was a film that was slated to be released on DVD and Blu-ray, as well as VOD, on December 19th, and there was actually a pre-order for the Blu-ray that was like, I don't know, 20 bucks, and I was this close to just biting the bullet and going for it because I didn't want to risk it, but I was like, you know what? If worse comes to worse, I'm seeing that duck movie <laughs> migration this week. So if, if worse comes to worse, I just don't get that extra review. But the film did actually release on VOD. I just rented it off of Amazon for like $4.99. And I just finished it. Now, what I want to say is that this movie is only 80 minutes. And right off the bat, what I want to say, like, after starting it immediately, is that I knew what this film reminded me of. And not only like what it reminded me of but this is before I actually looked it up and was like holy shit that is what it's based off of but this film reminded me so much of the Bong Chan Dong ghost which is a very popular ghost thing that uh, it's like a ghost story that I saw online when I was in like middle school I believe uh, a lot of people know about it. it is a very popular thing and that's what it reminded me of and then when I was looking it up looking up the Bong Chan Dong ghost I realized there was actually a prequel manga called The Ghost Station, and there was things in this movie that were absolutely ripped out of that manga. I saw some certain, like, uh, images and stuff where I was just like, as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, that is that scene. Now, what I want to say that's very interesting is that how this film, like, feels, it doesn't really feel like your typical Korean horror cinema fashion. It feels like something that is based off of, like, a creepypasta or should be paced or like overall deliver like a short horror film and I like that you know I like Korean horror I am familiar familiar with the horror that this is based off of and it felt like that and knowing that this was going to be a full 80 minute film I was just really curious to see how this was going to pay off as a full length film now I will say uh, again this film is not very long and with you know, any proper movie, I understand that you want to have a story, you want to flesh things out, you want to have good character background and character, you know, arc and everything, but I'd actually argue that just from, like, what this is inspired by, with its atmosphere, with how it should feel, you know, for example, like, a short horror film, I just, I feel like fleshing out characters, like, characters in a real, like, genuine storyline, it's just not needed in the very least, I feel like it should be secondary to the actual horror elements in the film. Again, like with a short horror film, you know enough of the characters, you've seen enough character, and you know enough of a story, at least, you know, enough to kind of get the idea, but with a short, limited runtime, you're mostly seeing horror. I mean, that's what you clicked on the video for. That's kind of what I felt this film should have felt like. That's what I wished it was. Which I do want to state, especially in the beginning, this is before I really had, like, kind of, kind of an idea of how I overall felt about this movie, but there's a lot of a lot of times where like characters are talking and they're more so just like explaining horrifying things that have happened and just kind of like recalling stuff and just literally telling about it. It's not really showing too much. And I feel like for what this film was inspired by, how short it is, and again, all the things that I said earlier, it would have just been so much, I think, more grabbing, at least from in the beginning, to actually see this horror stuff play out. Now, I will say, like, leaning into this, this film, it, it's, it, it tackles a lot of different, like, genres. There's at times where it's a crime film, there's times where it's an investigation, a mystery, a horror film, and sometimes you, you know, it does that all at once, where it's to the point where you don't really know how you should feel watching some of the scenes. You don't know, you know, what you want to feel when watching some scenes, or, like, what you're you know, picking up more on. But what I will say, uh, on a more positive note, like, regarding all this, is that it still feels, like, consistent as a story you're following and as a film you're watching, especially with all that it does and with its short runtime. I feel like it handles it, for the most part, pretty, you know, solidly. But as someone who likes Korean horror, came into this 
you know, wanting a Korean horror is familiar with the horror that this is based off of and a big fan of that. While the film is mostly, like, fine with how consistent it plays and, like, you know, ties everything in and balances, you know, all these different genres like crime, investigation, mystery, and horror, I do think that all those other elements can kind of downplay the horror in this movie when it is being a horror, like, when things should be horrifying, it just feels, like, a little bit more tame than I wish it was. And again, while I think it does, for the most part, fine with juggling all these things and, you know, balancing them out and kind of, like, mashing them together, there are times, again, where, like I said earlier, you really don't know how you should be feeling, what you overall want, or even more so, like, what the film is mostly trying to, like, give off. Like, for example, there's, you know, there's a lot of scenes where our main character will be, like, interviewing people at the station trying to figure out, like, the story and the lore behind it, people that are, like, related to deaths and everything, and the people that she's interviewing, for example, there's, like, things that are horrifying and horror-esque that should be horrifying that are happening, but you're also fixated on, like, what she's asking him and how he's responding and, like, what overall, like, story prog progression we're getting as well as, like, the overall tone of the scene, and it just doesn't give you a whole lot as far as, like, reward, as far as, like, what you're getting out of it, you know, reacting to and reflecting on, and you just don't really know how to feel, and it was just kind of, like, I just didn't take a whole lot of, lot out of as far as, like, a concrete feeling, and it just kind of, like, missed a mark that I think could have been a really interesting takeaway. Another aspect that I found wasn't, like, really bad or anything, it was just kind of, like, tame was the characters and the pacing with the characters and really just the pacing in general there's a lot of times again in this movie with all the things it's juggling and with its short runtime where things like again they land for the most part fine where you're just kind of like letting them slide you're like okay i see what they're going for whether i'm watching this as a horror film as a mystery as an investigative piece i understand like certain things where they should be landing but again it, it just feels like you're kind of crammed and you don't really know overall what the film's trying to like like what its main goal is whether that be tonally or you know story wise and you're just kind of like going with it just kind of what i can say is that like the most thing i felt is that i was just watching this movie there wasn't things that i was like picking up on more so than others there wasn't certain things that were like you know that i was like reacting to or reflecting or like taking with me, it was just like I was watching a film, and you know, I was fine with it. But weirdly enough, with all the film has to work with and how short it is, and for the most part, how, like, fine things are, especially getting to the halfway point, I don't really know why, but a lot of things just suddenly kind of felt like just, like, the film wasn't caring enough about them, or it was just throwing things away. You know, certain characters start just feeling like they're actually part of a movie more so than anything, and it just kind of, like, pulls you out of what, you know, you could have been attached to, or maybe what you were actually taking seriously. Like, for example, there's some, like, repeated humor that just doesn't land. Like, for example, there's this one character that, hit, like, more so than anything as a characteristic, what we're mainly seeing him do on screen is just pranking and jump-scaring his friend. The first time I was like, oh, I get it, yeah, that 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 could have worked as a jump-scare, but, like, if, if anything, this shouldn't have been something where, out of all that they could have worked with and all that they we're actually working with with how short the movie was, this should not have been something we should have started to see coming. It just felt completely useless and was just kind of like pathetic. Another thing going back into like how characters can start to feel like they're actually part of like an actual movie, I'm not gonna go too much into this because it sort of like goes into like what the movie's overall, I guess, like go as far as a story is, but one of the things that goes into the mystery and like the horror and the lore about this movie is that a lot of these characters are just like randomly having scratch marks all over their bodies and one of the characters, one, like uh, our our main character, our investigator is talking to this character and they're like, why do you, like, where did you get all these scratch marks from? Why do you have these? And the characters just all, non all nonchalantly like, oh I just kind of woke up with them. And it just goes on in the next thing so it's like, it feels like they're not taking this as seriously as they should. This movie isn't as strong or as horrifying or as like engaging as it should be. And I would go as far as to say that like the worst this goes to is that it could actually be to the film's detriment where it was a thing that by the end of it I was really annoyed because I was like for the most part for most of this movie I knew how I felt about the movie. I knew how I felt like overall I was like well is this movie good? Is it bad? Is it fine? I had that taken care of, and then by the ending, this went so far to the degree where I was like, 
I don't know how I feel about it now. And that is just the worst feeling after you finish a fucking movie where you're like, okay, I know how I feel about this movie. I know where it's landing with me. And then that ending, just certain things just pile up and like hit a certain nerve so much where you're like, I could have given this a pass, but where do I, like, what is the next thing below that? And even the scares at times, especially in the last act, they do start to feel like more traditional and bland and even like recycled and repeated at times. Things can even come off to the point of being laugh laughable and there's also just some unintentional nods, I think, to horror films that you're like watching a movie like this, not even just while you're viewing it, but before you go into it, you're, you're kind of going to this movie as a fan of, you know, certain films like Up This Film's Alley that are going to come to mind and there are nods to certain horror films, those horror films that play on the movie where you're like, what a fucking coincidence. And I just think that from this point on and especially just by the end of the movie, the things that I could have given a pass to and the things that I was looking forward to the most and like what I was getting out of that, it just all kind of like took a direction and a route, you know, whether that be tonally or like how well it was trying or how well it was landing where I just really didn't know how to feel by the end. It was a movie that I overall thought was fine for what it was doing and what it was incorporating and like what I wanted out of it. And even just as a story and film itself, things, weirdly enough, again with how much the film had to work with, how much it was doing and everything, and yes, especially for the last time, with its shorter runtime, things kind of just felt like, weirdly enough, really drawn out. It didn't really seem like to be taking the same route that we had been following up to this point. And the way I think I feel fair to, like, as far as, like, describing my overall thoughts by the end of this movie is that it's a film I thought was more so just fine throughout, that regardless of anything, the film was still consistent with its story as a film, whether that be an investigation, a mystery, or a horror, and by the end made what was already just fine more than anything kind of go to waste. And I'm feeling at least on the strong mix side with this one. Again, there was a lot of potential with this one, and I think that for what it was following and for how it was doing things, it was handled pretty much fine, but, but for a film inspired by something so strong and just landing lukewarm, Overall, I just can't fully recommend this one. So guys, that is going to do it for my review on the Ghost Station. I have a review of Migration coming in just a couple days, so look forward to that. But with all that being said, guys, that concludes it for this review, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.